I am Daniel Greenberg. I'm an attending in heart surgery in the Department of Cardiovascular Surgery at Louis Pradet Hospital, Lyon, France. And I'm going to talk about the Infinish Saga of Invasive Procedure for Secondary Mitral Regurgitation. Many studies have established the burden of secondary MR regurgitation on patients' prognosis. This figure is from one of the numerous publications on the topic, assessing the survival with a five years follow up of 303 patients' cohort diagnosed with a Q wave myocardial infarction. Mortality, as well as heart failure hospitalization, is strongly associated with the severity of secondary MR. What is now called Guideline Directed Medical Therapy, GTMT, is a cornerstone of the management of secondary MR. Throughout the last few decades, the impact of the addition of surgery to GTMT with respect to the natural evolution of the underlying cardiomyopathy has been studied and debated. Thus, today, the role of mitral valve surgery is still controversial. Several surgical techniques have been described over time such as valvular replacement and mitral valve repair techniques adapted to secondary MR disease. For more than a decade, additional innovative techniques such as percutaneous repair tools or transcatheter mitral valve replacement have filled the toolbox of structural heart teams. Thus, if the question of the optimal strategy regarding the treatment of MR disease was complex then when few surgical options were available, the problem has only grown more complex with the innovation of even more techniques. Sometimes the best way to anticipate the future is to look to the past. In this presentation and its associated manuscript, we aim to describe the saga of the surgical and percutaneous treatment for secondary MR throughout the previous decade and to learn from this history. In the late 80s and early 90s, most of study concerning mitral surgery for secondary MR highlighted high mortality rates. For some physicians, the reversal of blood flow resulting from mitral regurgitation was somehow beneficial to the left ventricle function in patients with LV dysfunction. It was thought that this patient would suffer if their MR was fixed and they would lose their pop-up effect of MR. The pop-off theory is soon disapproved by Stephen Bowling. Bowling saw the secondary MR as a vicious circle and proposed to reverse it by restoring the valvular competency. He first reported on the feasibility and short-term outcome of mitral annuloplasty in patients with end-stage cardiomyopathy. And by 1996, Bowling's team reported result of a cohort of 20 consecutive patients with end-stage dilated cardiomyopathy and refractory symptom of cardiac heart failure who underwent mitral annuloplasty for severe secondary MR. The study showed no operative death and a reasonable mortality. Moreover, the surgical annuloplasty resulted in an improvement of symptomatic status. All cohort studies conducted during these decades revealed reasonable operative mortality in this population. This benefit was reported in both ischemic and non-ischemic patients, and when mitral valve surgery was associated with coronary artery bypass grafting surgery. The technique also promoted durable LV reverse modeling and improved functional in class. Bowling's theory as well as in vivo studies demonstrated the paramount importance of maintaining the integrity of annular and subavular continuity during much of surgery. Back in the 90s, the standard surgical technique in this population was the much of replacement. The prohibitive mortality associated with the strategy could be attributed to the disruption of the subavular apparatus, which resulted in a worsening of the LV function and LV dilatation. Thereafter, in the mid-2000s, in functional MR patient, which later was reclassified as secondary MR, the mitral valve repair was always recommended over replacement. This repair consists of a restrictive annuloplasty with a non-flexible ring. This position was supported by both American and European guidelines in 2006 and 2007, despite a total lack of analysis comparing, comparing surgery in conjunction with medical treatment versus medical therapy alone. The first doubts concerning the real benefit of surgery in secondary MR patients arose in the late 2000s, 
After 10 years of promoting a proactive approach to secondary AMR, Bowling's team raised initial doubts concerning the real benefit for survival conferred by mitral valve endoplasty for secondary AMR with severe LV dysfunction. In a large retrospective study with a propensity score analysis, it was found that mitral valve endoplasty was not associated with the combined endpoint of this LV assist device implantation or UNO status 1. These findings apply to both non ischemic patients as well as in ischemic MR patients. On the right graph, we report the result of a retrospective cohort of almost 400 patients operated at the Cleveland Clinic. The study found that adding mitral valve to cabbage surgery helped to reduce postoperative MR and improve early symptoms compared with cabbage alone. However, it does not improve the long-term functional status or survival in patients with severe functional ischemic MR. The progression of MR following the restrictive anoplasty after the repair is quickly identified as a principal factor explaining this absence of survival benefit. The prevalence of postoperative MR seems to have an exponential relationship with the length of follow-up. The literature reports that in early postoperative phase, at six months, the prevalence of 2 plus MR is between 15 and 25%, and this prevalence increases markedly after one year follow-up to approximately 70% at five years. The progression of MR following the restrictive annulplasty is associated with poor survival, like in this retrospective study of 257 consecutive patients undergoing mitral valve repair for ischemic MR. The pathophysiological mechanism of persistent ischemic MR after the annulplasty are described on the top of this slide. For many surgeons, this statement is interpreted as results of surgery are bad because mitral valve annulplasty is an insufficient technique. Many additional surgical techniques are subsequently described to overcome mitral valve endoplasty issue, such as the section of basal cord or the subvalvular surgical technique like the papillary muscle approximation. Other specialists opposed the theory and made other interpretation of these deceiving results. In a restorative review of 370 patients with chronic ischemic MR, Julia Mann compared the outcome of patients operated of mitral valve repair versus mitral valve replacement with or without cabbage surgery. The data suggested that mitral valve repair was not superior to mitral valve replacement with regard to operative mortality and overall mortality. Most importantly, survival at long-term follow-up was found to be equal in both groups, regardless of the MR recurrence rate in the repair group. If patients with persistent MR despite much of our repair had the same survival rate as patients with no recurrent MR, the question of the clinical impact of treating secondary MR arose. The poor prognosis of this patient might be related to the underlying cardiomyopathy rather than to the mitral surgery. Thus, Evidence-based medicine had not yet reached the surgical world. Reading studies throughout the past can be somewhat confusing, and most of us are surprised to find contradictory results decades after decades. Actually, most studies published before 2010 were monocentric, retrospective, and included small population with heterogeneous patients with primary and secondary MR, ischemic and non-ischemic MR, and broad inclusion criteria regarding the LV function and dimensions. Moreover, most study report the retrospective result of single treatment with no control group. In order to provide strong evidence-based recommendation and probably stimulated, stimulated by the fast development of percutaneous techniques, considerable efforts were made by surgeon to, ident to identify best candidate for invasive correction of secondary MR, and to choose the best surgical strategies in this population. During the remainder of this presentation, as you'll see, we will focus on randomized study with a strict description of the study target population. In patients with severe ischemic MR who were candidates for cabbage surgery, a randomized study was performed in the US by the Cardiothoracic Surgical Trial Network, CTSN, to compare mitral valve repair and, re and replace over a 24-month follow-up period. 
The author find no significant difference in elderly modeling or survival between both groups. Two other major takeaways were also identified. First, the composite major adverse event occurred in up to 30% of patients at one year follow-up, highlighting the large potential for improvement in the therapy of ischemic secondary MR. Second, here again, investigators find an MR recurrence rate of 60% two years after mitral valve repair. Thus, if the persistence of MR had no impact on survival, the usefulness of treating secondary MR was once again in question. Notably, we have no trial comparing cabbage surgery alone versus cabbage surgery associated with mitral valve surgery in patients with severe ischemic MR for understandable ethical reasons. For candidates of revascularization surgery with moderate MR, another randomized study was also conducted by the CTSN investigator with the same primary endpoint. The authors show that a combined strategy was not associated with a higher degree of LV reverse remodeling. Survival was not different in both groups. In other words, there is currently no evidence that adding a mitral valve repair to surgical revascularization improved long-term clinical outcomes. In patients with LV adjacent fraction below 35% and coronary artery disease amenable to cabbage, it remains unclear if adding a surgery to the medical therapy provides any survival benefit in patients with mild MR. In patients with moderate to severe MR, a surgery might improve survival, but it remains unclear if this advantage is due to the cabbage itself or the treatment of the associated mitral regurgitation. Unlike ischemic cardiomyopathy, secondary MR in non-ischemic patients occurs more often in patients with reduced LV adjacent fraction. Preliminary results comparing mitral surgery and medical therapy in a historical patient with catastrophic LV parameter suggested the benefit of surgical correction of MR in terms of survival and LV remodeling. Thus, both patient characteristic and modern non-surgical therapy dramatically changed in the last 15 years, and this literature should be carefully interpreted. No surgical randomized study were carried out so far in this population, likely because proposing surgery to a third patient without cabbage indication appeared to be risky. Recent retrospective study failed to identify preoperative clinical or echographic prognostic parameter to guide decision making. As of today, surgery is an option with a 2B class of recommendation. There is no doubt that GDMT, including cardiac resynchronization therapy and myocardial revascularization, should systematically be considered as first-line treatment in patients with secondary MR complicating heart failure, regardless of the LV ejection fraction. The remaining patients unresponsible to GDMT as well as those developing secondary MR despite GDMT have the worst prognosis. This subset of patients must be evaluated by a structural heart team, and this population is probably the population that would benefit the most from a non-invasive mature repair or replace strategy. Finally, after more than 20 years of fine-tuning the recommendation regarding MR surgery, no significant evidence supports a systematic adoption of surgical treatment of secondary MR. Based on encouraging results from surgical edge-to-edge -edge techniques, percutaneous and transcatheter procedure with the macho clip have been in the works already for a decade. In 2011, the Everest 2 trial concluded that macho clip implantation was safe and feasible in a survey with 30% of secondary MR patients. Due to the design of the study, the efficacy of mitral clip was judged non-inferior to mitral valve repair, despite the reoperating rate of 22% in the mitral clip group versus 2% in the surgical group. In a subgroup analysis of Everest 2, it was found that mitral clip could have a clinical advantage compared to surgery in what was then known as functional MR population. Thus, 
As early as 2012, the potential use of percutaneous H2H procedure in secondary MR was mentioned for the first time in European guidelines. In 2018, the first two randomized studies comparing a group receiving GDMT versus a group of matrically plus GDMT in a population of heart failure patients with secondary MR contraindicated for surgery were published. The first study, Mitrifer, published in August, showed an absence of benefit in the primary endpoint and in any subgroup analysis. These results were in total accordance with all previous literature. A month later, surprising results were announced in the COAP study, showing for the first time in the history of secondary MR treatment a major benefit of invasive procedure compared to a control group. This benefit was found for the primary endpoint, the mortality, and in any subgroup analysis. These apparently contradictory results created a buzz in the cardiology community. Hundreds of publications were subsequently published to analyze this discrepancy. Among the numerous analyses, major differences in terms of severity of regurgitation and LV volume were found. This apparent discrepancy led to the rethinking of the definition of secondary MR with the birth of the concept of proportionate disproportionate MR, which allowed the cardiologic community to reconcile the result of the two studies. This classification model is yet to be validated, and even more important, it is necessary to understand how these two studies will help the decision making for every single patient going forward. New guidelines are expected in the US in 2020 and in Europe in 2021. If we can't predict the future, this fast journey through the past helps us to imagine what this recommendation might look like. Definition of secondary MR might be revisited, integrated the regurgitation and its ventricular environment. GDMT will be confirmed as first line treatment. The pivotal role of the structural valve heart team should be reinforced. An MR correction will likely be proposed in candidate for cabbage surgery with severe MR. Finally, in non-ischemic cardiomyopathy, evidence-based medicine never confirmed the benefits of the surgical treatment of secondary MR. This population might benefit the most of innovative percutaneous solutions. There is evidence supporting the use of matroclip in patients contraindicated for surgery. Co-opt-like patients are the best responders.